The Cruise, a play in one act by Anna Isaki Smith. The time is the present early afternoon. The place is Sonny's room at Kendall on Hudson, a nursing home in Sleepy Hollow, New York. Sonny is lying on a hospital bed. Next to her is her daughter, Gina. Between them is a wheeled plastic table with two mugs of hot tea and a paper plate with cookies. So the porgy is wrapped in wax paper on the top shelf of the refrigerator. It's already been cleaned by the fish man at each month. So you should be able to cook it right away. Wait a minute. If you bought the porgy before your stroke, that means it's been sitting in your fridge for- It's still good. Porgy is a large flake fish and isn't oily. So it keeps well. You're too sensitive about these kinds of things. Mom, most people are sensitive about fish that's been sitting in the fridge for over two months. I'm not asking you to prepare sushi. It won't be wrong. I'm teaching you how to braise fish. That's what we did when I was growing up without a refrigerator. We braised fish to create deep flavor. Okay, so I have to take the porgy out of the fridge, then what? You combine sake, marin, soy sauce, and sugar in a saucepan and bring to boil over high heat. I don't have any sake. Can I use white wine? I've never tried braising fish with white wine before. Maybe it'll be okay. Anyway, after you bring that soy sauce mixture to also, a Also, can I just skip the mirin? I can't find things like that in my Whole Foods. I'd have to get a hard scale to buy mirin. I, I don't have the time right now. Well, maybe you should just buy a pizza. Oh, Mom, don't be like that. Forget about the porgy. Forget about everything. Okay, Mom, come on. As much as I like the idea of writing down all your Japanese recipes, I don't know if I have the time or patience to make them. But our cooking history is important. Our food is important. Yes, I know. But my life is different than yours was. I work. I, I don't have as much time to cook. I hope you understand that. So what happens to my recipes? The food I cook every day when you and your sister were growing up. Are they going to die with me? No, no, don't say that. Look, I'll buy sake mirin, okay? I'm ready. Let's keep going. I don't want to do this anymore. Come on, Mom. I'm sorry. One day, you'll crave a Japanese dish I used to make for you. You'll have no idea how to prepare it, nor why it tasted so good. And it'll be too late. Okay, mom, I'm just tired. I care about this. You know I do. You can't call a dead person with a question. Mom, please stop it. I don't want to disappear. I don't want everything I've ever done to be forgotten. Look, I'm sorry, mom. I know this is hard. Hard? This is like a vacation. It is? Of course, of course. For the first time in 85 years. I don't have anything to worry about. What were you so worried about before? Will my pipes freeze and burst? Is that gas I smell in the kitchen? Will my stove explode and burn my face off? It was hard living alone. And look at you now, having tea and cookies at three in the afternoon. You're like a British person. Well, these cookies taste like cardboard, but still, feel like I'm on a cruise. With all your friends? All my friends are dead. I'm on this cruise alone. But Barbara next door is so nice and you seem to get along with that woman Joan down the hall. They're not my friends. Well, I like this idea of you being on a cruise. On a ship that doesn't move. But then you don't get seasick. That's the best kind of cruise. No. Do you know what the best thing is? What? This nursing home is free. It is? Yes. It's so unusual. People bring in trays of food. A man comes in every day and gives me a shower. Somebody washes and folds my clothes. And it's all free. 
mom, what makes you think their nursing home is free? Because my tax dollars are paying for it. I'm sorry to tell you this, but this nursing home isn't free. In fact, it's the opposite of free. No, I know it's free. According to whom? According to Obama. He told me. Obama? Yes. As in President Obama? That's right. Barack. But I just call him Obama. How could you possibly have spoken to Obama? He works here. At the nursing home? Yes. He helps serve at lunchtime. Why would Obama be working here? Maybe he's bored. If he's bored, why wouldn't he just build his presidential library or call Joe Biden and tell him what to do about Donald Trump? I don't ask questions. Obama is very private. Well, I'm glad you're respecting his privacy. He's got such a beautiful singing voice, that Obama. Sometimes he sings at lunchtime. What does he sing? Rock and roll something. He doesn't sing classical, but still, I like to listen. Well, you're lucky to be stuck on a cruise alone with singing Obama. <laughs> Thanks to my tax dollars. Can you pour me some more hot water? She refreshes her mother's teacup. Uh, but getting back to things being hard here, about what it's like... To be dying? Well, no, that's not what I meant. But now that you're bringing it up... Dying is nothing. Mom, dying is not nothing. It is nothing. Aren't you scared? About what? Pain? Well, for starters, I'm not afraid of pain. To me, pain is life, not death. Aren't you just scared? I'm old. It takes too much energy to be scared. People still wonder, though. That's a waste of time. People who wonder about death have too much free time. But when you're in bed alone at night, don't you wonder? I'm at the end of my life. I don't think about much. I find that hard to believe. Sometimes I think about how much I like my bed. That's it? When you turn 85, maybe you understand. There's a knock at the door, and Sonny's neighbor, Barbara, enters. Oh, Sonny, you missed our weekly manicure today. You would have loved it. Look. I got a new color. It's called Romantic Bordeaux. <laughs> oh, please. Can't you see I'm dying? Please, let me die in peace. Uh, please excuse my mother. We're in a little deep here. Oh, honey, don't worry. We're all on the same journey, Sonny, aren't we? Save me a seat. Barbara you make, exits. You make it sound like I have a choice. Well, you read about people having a hard time with death. I like being alive very much, but death is death. So have you talked to Obama about it? No, we talk about other things. Like what it was like being president? No, we talk about his favorite movie. He really likes Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> Do you remember we saw Chitty Chitty Bang Bang together? I think it was for my birthday. What? But they, no, I've never seen that movie before in my life. Never. Obama said, we'll watch it on movie night next week. You can come join if you like. Yeah, sure. I've always wanted to meet Obama. You look tired, Tina. Don't worry so much. I'm not worried, Mom. Maybe it's disappointing for you. But I don't have so many complicated thoughts. I'm glad to hear that. When I'm hungry, I think about eating. When I'm tired, I think about sleeping. Like that. Gina bends over to kiss her mother on the forehead. And when you're dying, you think about... Mom? Mom! <laughs> When I'm dying, I think about what it's like to be alive. I'm 
simply quite a simple person, Gina. I always have been. Death doesn't change that. Sunny smiles, her face pale and luminous, her cup of untouched tea now cold on the table. Gina pauses by the door and nods at her mother. Lights. <laughs> <laughs>